Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba family and we are here in the Gambia at one of my favorite tour sites, Kachikali Crocodile Pool and Museum. So our group members are in and we are literally just gonna enjoy a nice presentation and just you know, show you something uh, different, you know, we are, uh, you know, it's not like a safari or somewhere, but uh, you know, we, we are people who are into nature and interconnecting in the elements of uh, what we have. So two years ago we came here and it was a you know, great presentation. So here to this, uh, we connect you on a strong energy. Uh, and this is Kachikali Museum. So you have a few, you know, a few different uh, huts uh, set up to where it's been modified into a museum, very impressive. And once we actually finish going to the museum family, we're gonna go take you to the crocodile pool. Only thing I always tell my sister Akuvi and other people, you know that uh, you know that uh, the crocodiles are vegetarian. So if you fall into the pool, they're not gonna eat you. They'll just try to get you to. You know, they'll be running from you. And it, I'm gonna eat them. You know? And then you know, they, I think they like white meat, not dark meat. Okay. <laughs> around here. I love the I love the shirt. Appreciate you wearing it, you. and appreciate your energy and your support. Thank this is my good sister, one of my best tour members. She was with me in Ghana last year. Now she's back with me in Senegal and Gambia. And then, as a matter of fact, when she said that when, when I first talked to her, and she's just been awesome. So that's what makes this business work, family. I've been in this business for 17 years, only for one specific reason, is because we have good brothers and sisters from the African diaspora, from the Americas, that have supported what we have done. And you know, our goal is always, as Africa for the Africans, is to put black dollars in black hands, uh, do our global business, uh, black pipeline, working with our people from Africa to America, America to Africa, and keeping us strong. You know, it's, it's, it's an incredible connection that we gotta keep strong. Good luck with that one, and you should be here. You have missed out. The journey yeah. of a lifetime continues. Yes, family, it's been awesome. Uh, and this is our actual second Senegal and the Gambia Roots and Culture Tour. We did the last one in 2021. So we're looking forward to do another one as, you know, since we're building more schedules, it's, uh, you know, makes it hard to just do a country um, every, you know, every year or so. So sometimes we have to do, you know, maybe just every other year instead of, you know, once a year. So we're going to keep it working out, but uh, it give us enough time to build a nice tour group. So I'm going to give you a nice little feel of this wonderful museum. And you know, what I always say uh, is that, you know, we can only show you so much, and most of what we show you, family, is always gonna be highlights. But in order for you to get the full aspect of uh, you know, the tour, you know, you must be here. And also, if you can't journey with us, you know, when you get to the country, always literally just recommend you know, that you just take your time and reach out to, you know, these different cultural sites because that's what that's what it is about. It's about us reconnecting to our roots and culture, and us also supporting uh, what's going on in the country. Because if we don't support the history and the culture, then you know museums and historical places will be closed. So that's why I'm a big fan of us doing tourism and us visiting different parts of our Black world. And, and that is our good brother right here. He's the he's a tour guide of the space. Uh, do we have another tour guide? Only one tour guide. Oh, another tour. Oh, you guys are busy today. Yeah. You work here, right? No, I don't. I'm a tourist taxi Oh, okay, okay, okay. You, so you brought your 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 group my, my, people my here. Friends, yeah. Oh, perfect. You know, appreciate you bringing them out to support the energy here. So here you can see some of these instruments that are 
made from the calabash tree. Calabashes are used for containers, and now, but now they're more instrumental. This is where we, this is what we use our fridge. This is the refrigerator we had before. You know, they put water in it and they cover it. They are normally big holes like that, and they put the calabash inside, they put water beneath there. So when they put water inside the calabash, they cover it. One hour, two hours, it's very cold, like from the refrigerator. Yeah, but now they're more instrumental, very more instrumental. And most of these drums here, you can see, these are our traditional drum, mandingas, and the water drum, and the jola drum. Yeah. And kora is one of the oldest instruments in West Africa. I'm not good, I don't know. No, I'm keep on playing, brother. That's a nice tune, man. You're jamming. And it has 21 string anyway. And these, the Kora prayers, like this guy here in the picture, these are the men that preserve a lot of African history. Because then there was no, many people were not educated. So these guys here, their natural smartness and intelligence, they know the history of our people and the movement of the people, how the people were able to settle from one place to another. Like how the Mandinka people just came from Mali and came to the Gambia here. You know, so they know the history of their families and the individual. So most of the African histories, as particular this country, are taken out from the men like this because they have the knowledge, vast knowledge of Africa and African history. And they've never been to school to learn. But these are very smart people, very intelligent. Yeah, the Kora friends. Naturally, we don't go to music school. We only learn it when we are kids that we have an empty pot and we put looking for a piece of a paper covered in the mouth and we started to play like one. These are the drums that we send messages. This is the message drum. This was a telephone that we were using with no pay, no bill on it. It's no matter how expensive that you made, this is very cheap to send a message across. You know, you see, this is called a tabla. We have this tabla across every village in this country. And if something happened, in a bed or emergency happen or something that is joy or peace, they want to call their attention to the people. Yeah. You see the stick that somebody will do. The boom, bam, the message goes that people know exactly what this boom, bam means. Mm -hmm. And people will come to, towards that and the guy will give the message to the people. This was the time that we have no telephone, nothing, but this was a telephone at the time that we are people we're using to send the messages out there. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, my brother. Good to see you again, man. I know. I just want to wait until we're out, then I can say hi to you. <laughs> yes, um, yes yeah, absolutely. Okay. Always appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. All right, so... Yeah, you can come in. So you're Sorry. Don't let you cross We're not yet to the crocodile. <laughs> All right. So you can see there. These are the features that uh, men from Africa include. All of Africa, including the small town of Gambia. At the time, we only had four hundred thousand people in this country. And then out of 400,000 people, we sent 650 men to contribute to fought for the interests of the British and Americans in the World War II. And these are the times that came discriminately, that the people that set the, made them to settle down on the floor, and the medical doctor would check in on those men if they are medically all right or not, positive or negative, those are fit to go, they send them to the war. Those that have health issues, they send them back home. So the war was imposed on people in Africa. And these were the time that people were so powerless that colonial masters had the power. And they came to do that to our people. And they sent them to Japan, uh, sorry, in Burma, in Asia, where they fought against the Japanese. You know, and so many, in every 10, you only have two white and the eight the black people. And also, in, during the war, the Japanese soldiers would not spare any African men or soldiers that arrested. They were just going to, they kill them straight. But when they arrested the British or Americans or the French, they take them as a prisoners of war. But they never take, they never take our people as a prisoners of war. They just take them as the enemies and they gun them, gun them down in the war. That's the same thing they did in the United States during the uh the war against the North and the South. When they caught the slave, they would kill them straight out. But the other ones, they would hold them for the same time. Yeah. <coughs> the point, great point. Yeah. You okay? <coughs> yeah, you can see, that's what Isaac was saying here. Our people have never been taken as a business of war, but they take them as enemies and they kill them straight out. Two women they have part of the room. Uh, yes, they like to do their own thing sometimes. You know, which is not so good. So they but yes, they're part of our group. Especially if you see somebody say Africa for Africans t shirt. Okay. But yeah, all of the brothers and sisters are with our group. Guess we now head into the crocodile before they miss us. <laughs> yes, time for the feeding. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the feeding. Yeah, this, yeah. Is more, this is more politics now. And there you can see that um, this is the time that, this was the year we have the independence of Uganda in 1965. Yeah, in 1965, this is the guy that we have as the president. Yeah. He's the first pres the president. Okay. He was the first prime minister, and then he's the first president of our country. From 1965 till the year 1994, when his country, his government was toppled by the military coup. He suffered two military coups, but he survived for one of them that was happened in 1981. And when the, 
He's a very peaceful and democratic man, very peaceful, because after 1965 till 1981, Gambia does not have a professional army. We only have a police, and this guy never wants us to have a ministry in this country, because he said at all the time that our country is too small, so we're not going to go to war with nobody. Or what he was he's doing to have to build good health facilities, roads and schools, and and to make sure that people have sufficient food, you know, Gambia don't go hungry. So that's what he's, what is all his aim and he's in thinking. Until 1981, when these guys, uh, Gambians that were living in Libya for so long, and they were funded by the former Libyan leader to come and overthrow his government. And they did, then succeeded, but they only last for 24 hours. And quickly, our neighboring country, the Senegal, forces came to rescue and they restored him back. That's why we have the name Senegambia. That yes, was the name yes. the deal signed between the Gambia and Senegal, the collaboration day for that in these two countries, unification of the country. Yeah. So 1985, till he was kind of under pressure that Gambia must have to go to his own army. Then he decided in 1985. Yeah, we can have a small number of army. We don't need big army. Because even today that you find that even the modern day is only the country in the world, I would say that I know that police do not carry guns in this country. Because, you know, what do they need guns for? It's a very peaceful country. The only guns that we see from people, there may be military men, but not our police. Our police not allowed to carry guns. You know, because, you know, it's not, our country is not that much, it's not a violent country. Very peaceful. I Very love peaceful. It. So that's why the police don't carry guns, they don't pursue criminals, or criminals shooting with the police in this country. So, you know, so, so you enjoy that. We, everybody enjoy that. So we go to sleep with no two mind, that no stress that we're going to be gone down in, a, in, a, in a, any minute, you know. So that's it. But 1994, his government was troubled by the former president who also was in the power for 22 years and that give that gave gambians a wake up court and this guy when oh. he took over the country in 1994 he became a the dictator of a modern dictator nobody speaks about him if you want to call his name you have to look around a thousand times to see nobody will report you Wow. And this guy, that's this man here. Can we give the name? This is Jamie. Okay. Jamie. Or Lieutenant uh, Lieutenant Yahya yeah, yeah, Jamie. Yahya yeah, yeah. AJJ Jamie. Jamie. Oh, yeah. Also, he's a lieutenant, okay? Yeah, he was a young man, 20, 29 years old. This is his picture on the lady. Yeah, he, he got, he, pr he printed his own picture in him. Yeah. <laughs> This was, he's, a, he's a, the worst dictator of the 21st century. Gambians go suffered, we suffered wow. heavily under this man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gambian. And look, in 2020, look what he did to the students. They gone down students for peaceful demonstration. If you wow. go out for peaceful demonstration, the next thing you're going to receive is a light bullet. His career. Oh, wow. And he has raped a lot of young girls. Many hundreds. He kills a lot of people during his tenure. More than 3,000 gamblers lost their life. And some of them, we still don't find them. Nobody knows where they were buried or where they have been disappeared. Yeah. And now, he's wanted by a lot of internet criminal courts, African Justice Court for Justice. He's wanted for that. He ran away after he lost the election. In, 20, in 2016, he oh, runs away. He's now in exile at a country called Guinea Equatorial. Mm -hmm. Because the guy in there also is a dictator, being in the president for 42 years. Wow. And he knows that that's the only hell seven for him. So that's why he runs to there, to save himself. But the pressure is mounting on the president there to release him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to release him. At that time, name? if you want, hmm? what's his name again? Jambe. 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 That's Jambe. His, yeah, yeah, Jambe. If you want to say Yaya yeah, Jambe at that time in the Gambia before 2016, you know, you have to look around. Maybe you think that even the trees will lie against you. 
And when they arrested you, that's it. That's the end of you. Wow. No prison, they kill you. Because he has a hit squad. This is a killing squad. Um, they are called the junglers. These junglers, they were trained by the Italian mafia. He hired, he hired the Italian mafia how to kill people. Some of them, they suffocated and put in the nylon bags on their heads and they suffocated them to death. And some, in his own village, he has a crocodile pool like here, but those crocodiles are very more aggressive. Some of his critics, when he killed them, he dropped them in the, dropped them in the crocodiles to eat. Mm. What? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> That's why the youngest will never so he, he ruled with an iron fist. So family, that was the Crocodile Pool Museum and also some history and some politics and many other things. Uh, so we're going to move on to the main event. So Look at me, they ask you for the money. Huh? Look so family. They ask you for the money with the guy's face on it because it's jammy. <laughs> and then... A, is, it, is it the same president or is it, it, a, new, is. Is it a new but one? I didn't realize that that was the, the bad president, you know. That's, they said they're trying to get rid of the money, you know. So I was just going to keep it as a, you know, souvenir. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to keep the, yeah, the but, guy's face. But you know, I was hoping to hear some positive things about what the man did. But you know, nevertheless, that's the brother's presentation. I've also had other presentations for other people who share some more insights on things. That's but, the truth. But family, That's the truth. but family, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things where you know, you know, where it's this uh, this presentation from different people and their views. So we have another person that's going to give a different view on the reign of Yahya. So family. That was a great uh, you know, museum for you to tour, for you to check out good documentation. So definitely recommend you join us or when you come through, you know, visit the Kachikali Crocodile Pool. So family, we have a whole lot more to show you as the journey of a lifetime continues.